Hello everybody and welcome to our channel and we are here today to read one of your precious letters. <laughs> yeah, we have quite a few waiting for us and uh, you know, we're not getting through them as fast as we should, but so here's one from April. From April, another one. I'm sorry. <laughs> May has been a very busy month. Yeah, it has. <laughs> yeah, in June, so please forgive us. <laughs> Dear Sadie and Pete, hope you're doing well. I'm from Turkey and I'm a 19-year-old lesbian. I had my first love in 2022 and it lasted one year. She was from Istanbul where I study university. We met there and during the relationship she would come to my house and stay a week long or I would go to theirs like that. We had a strong relationship and her mom knew the whole time about us and everything. She always supported us and loved our relationship. And thanks to them I've experienced what it looks like to have a parent that knows and supports. But unlike hers, my mom thought we were best friends and she loved and welcomed her like that. I always thought that my mom was getting some clues about my sexuality, but apparently she, she didn't. And I learned it the bad way. I was sitting and crying secretly after my now ex-girlfriend and mom walked in and saw me crying. She asked me and I didn't tell until like three hours of her asking. Finally, I said that the girl that seemed like my bestie was actually my girlfriend for one year and she was shocked. She kissed me and said, I love you, but also she said, you aren't normal, be normal. And it wrecked my heart. I always thought she would understand somehow, but it wasn't the case at all. Then she started to act so cold with me. And I prepared a letter that says I won't change and I did nothing wrong and I just had feelings. After I got out of home, I sent the letter and waited for her to read. She read and called me and she wasn't cold at all. I thought that the letter thing worked and it's gonna be all right. But today she came and told, don't tell these things to your brother anymore. It's not good for him. My brother supports me and he's 14 by the way. So I got upset and pissed off again. And I sent her a documentary of some Turkish parents of LGBT children talking about their experiences. And the help site that you can get in touch with as a parent to, help, to get help from. I don't know if she watches or calls the line for me for herself to understand me. But I just hope and want to have a relationship with my mom like my ex did with hers. I'm so upset about all this, Sadie. And I want to ask you as a Turkish lesbian, how was your mom? And do you think that I have a chance? I love your content and take care and hope you can read mine too. Wow. That's for you. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. This freaking sucks. And I know it's such a common experience with... Um, Turkish parents or many other cultures. With my mom, it was definitely easier, I would say, but she wasn't super supportive of the LGBT when I was growing up. Like I remember one time we watched this kind of gay movie. I think it was like a festival, special mm -hmm. festival movie. And there was a gay relationship with two guys in it. My mom very... Brokeback Mountain. No, not Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> it was more mild than Brokeback Mountain. Oh, okay. And my mom oh, wow. was really off put by that. And she was like, oh my God, that's so unnatural. So she was not in the culture of like super accepting. But when I came out, I was so adamant. And I was already in Canada. So she saw like how supportive everybody in Canada was. So she kind of adopted that mentality. Uh, I think if I was in Turkey and I came out, she would be a little bit more judgmental or maybe react like the way my other relatives did. Like, for example, my aunt wouldn't accept it. She was like, oh, she'll change, she'll grow out of it. Or my dad was like, oh, she's bisexual. Like, my dad was really holding on to the hope that I would finally end up with a guy at some point. <laughs> but, um, sorry, dad, like, never happened. So... It's really the culture. It's not your mom not loving you. It's just that she's brainwashed in this really thick, like homophobic culture. And for them, it isn't normal. For them, it is like a mental illness, which is so messed up. But there's no shortcut to this. Like you just have to be yourself and have good boundaries. And if she's not being supportive, you need to kind of keep her a little bit distant from yourself so you can protect yourself. And hopefully, since she's your mom and she loves you, like eventually she's just gonna accept it. But yeah, I know how hard it can be. Yeah. And there's no shortcut answer. So yeah, you just have to wait. The key word is normal, okay? 
And um, if you actually normalize it with your everyday life and, mm -hmm. you know, you're gay, you do your life as a gay person, and the more you normalize it for yourself and the more your parents and whoever, you know, is around you are going to absorb that normalization <laughs> So they will accept it more and more, hopefully, mm -hmm. unless they are so stuck up, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, that, that's, that's what happened with my parents and my sister. So even though my mom was uh, shocked at the beginning, a little shocked, and uh, uh, it took her some time, like, oh, don't say this, don't say that, don't make these YouTube videos, people will know, and blah, 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 and I just ignore her, you know, and I behave normal like this is my normal and and she literally adopted that and they became normal to her as well yeah yeah that's a good point yeah and my sister too actually my sister didn't talk to me for a month and I just let her be I just kept on being my normal <laughs> and then she said oh that's normal so it's okay so they adopt your normal okay <laughs> Yeah, so. there's nothing wrong with you. There's literally nothing wrong, and you're probably gonna enjoy life in a in a lot of ways that they never will. So, like being gay is awesome. So yeah, just you know, enjoy your life, enjoy your connections, your relationships. Yeah. What's you awesome know. is being yourself. Yeah, like just be yourself. I love being a lesbian. I mean, after a while, even my mom was starting to get jealous because you get so <laughs> many benefits. First of all. You don't have to take birth control. Don't have to worry about getting pregnant because, you know, can't happen. Um, like, the emotional connection is incredible. There's a level that you just can't get with many guys. Mm -hmm. Like, they just relate to you. They understand you. You can actually talk like normal people. <laughs> and uh, you can wear each other's clothes. So many clothes. <laughs> You know, you have great sex, like what can you say? There's, <laughs> there's nothing better, so just enjoy and hopefully she'll get on board with it pretty soon. Let's do another one, I think that was pretty short. Okay, so this one is also in April. Is it the last one from April? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope this email finds you well. I came across your YouTube channel a few years ago and I'm back on it continuously. And I'm queer, like I have a girlfriend for the past two months and normally I'm mask and femme which brings a lot of attention to me. And also I'm into like way older women. I was a 15 year old and you might say I have mommy's issues, but not the case. I grew up with a foster family, but even as a kid I was gay and attracted to men and women. And now I only like women. Being gay is hard. I had the worst coming out story and people seem to play with my heart a lot. And being into older women is a pain in my ass. <laughs> I mean, sure, older women work wonders, and in general are way better, but it's hard as fuck to find people who won't judge you for having those dumb mommy kind of thing, is what literally I want. I could never have someone thinking <laughs> liking older is the norm, because for my age, I just hope I could get some advice in a reply. <laughs> oh my gosh, the, you know what a dumb mommy is? Yeah. Like a dominant. Dominant, yes. Older. Yeah. <laughs> So she likes that, yeah. that type. <laughs> like, what do you think about um, age gap and mommy's issues? Do you have anything to say about that? It's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. I feel like it should be normalized because there's so many straight girls who are into older men. Like, now daddy is becoming a, this term is yeah. super popular. Yeah, it's yeah. never going to be the norm. We struggle with it yeah. on the daily. Like, not going to lie. Yeah. As she gets older... It's becoming harder, especially in public. Like you don't want to be creepy. You don't want anybody to know that you're a couple because literally everywhere we go, and I don't know if this is just in Italy or like all over the world, no, but everywhere, everywhere we go, they think I'm your daughter. Yes. Just without any questions asked, like, is your mom okay? Is your daughter, how? how's your daughter doing? And it's creepy as fuck. <laughs> and then the workers that came here every time, Oh, that girl, and I say, oh, um, uh, she's a girl from Canada. She's a friend from Canada. Uh, she's a friend from Canada. Uh, so, <laughs> so she's uh, my wife, my girlfriend, and a friend from Canada <laughs> for some people. Yeah. Yeah, because you never, yeah. Look, you got to just own it, you know, because we're weird for being in an age gap relationship, but you have to own it. 
you have to own being weird because otherwise you're just gonna live life like against yourself and it's yeah. difficult to do that I mean, those moments are far in between and uh, they don't compare to the happiness and joy, you know, you have in a relationship that you want to have. At least for me, it's like that. Like Maybe way in the future, everybody will be like, oh, it doesn't matter. Age gap doesn't matter. Being gay doesn't matter. But we're not there yet. We're still very no. like heteronormative yeah. Everybody has to be in the same age bracket. Right. Yeah, there will come a time when, you know, how now they ask, uh, how do you define yourself, you know, and uh, like a female, male, other, other, whatever. Uh, there will come a time when they will not say, is she your daughter or is she your mom, mm-hmm. you know. They will ask first, like, who what's your relationship, you know? Oh, that'd be nice. And uh, <laughs> so that they don't assume anything, so... Ah, I don't expect this to happen anytime soon. I don't know, maybe in an ideal world, but that, that, that's okay. But we're part of the progress, you know, like we're part of the revolution. Yes. And every time we said that, I remember every time we said we are married, wow, they, they really welcomed it. They like, wow, this is different, you know? Or maybe they're just trying to pretend like they're okay with it to not lose you as a friend. <laughs> no, it wasn't friends, just oh. people. They, they don't have to say anything. Like, okay. Oh, they can say, oh, that, that's your wife. Okay. Okay. No, a couple of persons say, oh, well, yeah. No, they, they behave friendlier for some reason. <laughs> But like, think about it, maybe like 20 years ago, by like racial relationships, like white people with, you know, black people, yeah. that was a whole thing. Yes, it exactly. Yeah, exactly. to be with your own race or Jews, not being with non-Jews was like, no. And now it's normal, so we'll yeah. get there. Um, and then there is one thing that I always keep in, in the back of my mind, and it's, Everyone has a skeleton in their closet. Everyone, okay? Mm-hmm. They don't have to, you know, be gay or uh, same kind of relationship you are describing in your letter. They don't have to be super weird, okay? But trust me. So everyone has a skeleton in their closet. And uh, I noticed that uh, when, if, when I come up with people and say, she's my partner, I'm in a same-sex relationship. Many people, it's like, you feel like they relax with you because they feel like I can be more myself with these people. Mm. And maybe they feel not so bad about their skeleton in the closet. They don't need to say it, of course, but Mm. they think there are weirder people than me. Maybe I can, you know, (laughs) and I can relax. So I noticed even this little, you know, behaviors and and it's very interesting also i want to add something about that like oh whenever you're with somebody older they think you have mommy issues it could be the case but not necessarily because i would not mind being with somebody younger than me either you know as much as i love women who are older i also love women who are younger yeah like i just do i'm attracted to women of all ages and uh who the person is it's what attracts me Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but there are people who have a type, and that's, they that's always go for well. that. Yeah, yeah, and that's fine too. It's like having a type for blonde or brunette, yeah. or it doesn't mean you have a problem. Like, oh, if you're only attracted to brunettes, and your mom was a brunette, you have mommy issues. Like, okay, it's <laughs> fine to have daddy's <laughs> issues and mommy's <laughs> issues. It's totally fine. I mean, why would people? judge other people because they have oh you have mommy's issues and so what can i have can i still have this relationship (laughs) with this person who is like my mom who can be like my mom or you know can i still or just because i have mommy's issues i should discard that no i mean you know look to be fair if we dive into like the psychological basis for that literally everybody has mommy and daddy issues yes. because your emotional scarring and trauma happens when yeah. you're a child so literally everybody in every relationship even if they're with the same age partner they are both children with each other because they go back into that like traumatized part right. of themselves when they're in an emotional connection everybody has issues okay yes. so 
Don't don't worry about it. All great. Right. That's great. Thank you for writing to us. And uh, it's that's all for today. At least we completed the month of April. There's no more letters from April. So now we have to catch up with May. Okay. And June. <laughs> all right. That's good. Okay. Thank so. you again. We love you guys. Thank you for supporting us and uh, writing your comments. We always read them. And uh, thank you so much. See you next time.